Hey everybody and welcome to the ECS Hangout. We have this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And what's the show about? We're about cars. We're talking about every kind of car imaginable. If you like drift, drag, racing, uh, we want to do some more stuff with some mini trucks. We got uh, low riders, hot rods, you name it. We want to talk about it. Uh, and that thing is, is we're here on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, IG, all the different uh, areas out there. And what we are is it's, it's an open discussion. We want everybody out there to have an ability to discuss with us, tell us what they experience in their stuff and everything they're going on with in the car scene today. So uh, down in the lower left down there, you're going to see uh, some of the footage that they took from Revolution uh, in Kentucky. So while that's going on, you might see some stuff going on in the lower left. If that's his, we want to add a little bit of flavor and some car show flair to everything. So first, let's introduce the staff here today on our panel. First, it's me, Primo. I'm kind of the moderator. Uh, next, we have Reggie, who is the uh, master of ECS magazine. And then I don't know, did Sebastian lock up over there? Yeah, I think he froze. No, I'm he still froze. here. I, got, I had to send a message right quick. <laughs> All right. Well, introduce yourself to everybody and let everybody know what you're about. Sebastian, a.k.a. Denny Mac, all about the custom cars of not that you see every day. Perfect. And Joel, you're up next, buddy. I'm Joel Chapel with NewEnglandAutoShows.com, the premier place to go and find out about car shows happening throughout the New England, New England area. Say that three times faster. Okay, three times fast. Done. Uh, <laughs> next up, and next we have a newcomer to the uh, the panel here, and welcome Shane. How you doing, Shane? Can you tell everybody what you're about and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It's got the military tribute truck, the Nissan Frontier that uh, I built for my father. My brother-in-law was the original owner of it. It was a stock Nissan Frontier. And he did for Afghanistan, passed away, and ended up building the truck as a tribute to him and my father. All right, can you um? That's the thing is, I'd like to start off with that because some people had asked about it before, and as you guys can see over in the lower left, you can start to see the pictures of the truck uh, as he's kind of describing them. Can you go over? Uh, you did kind of kind of skim over it real quick. Can you kind of give us the details about the truck and? you know, what was done to it, that kind of stuff, and the whole thing about the dedication? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, my brother-in-law, he did four tours over in Iraq and Afghanistan. He came home while he was over there in uh, Iraq and had a severe head injury. He came home and ended up passing away from a seizure. So oh. the truck, I'd asked my sister, a red truck, and she said she was probably going to sell it because she wanted to buy my nephew. He had just time, and I had a Dodge Charger at the time. I mean, I said, well, you know, hey, let's swap B Charger because I, I figured, you know, that, that's what a kid would want, a sports car. And mm -hmm. let me take what my brother wanted to do. I wanted to build something with it to keep it in the family in case his kids wanted to have his dad by eventually. So, so this is the third build that I've done with the truck. I just got, got done with building it and debuted it at Battle on the Bama. I don't remember if anybody remembers. It was white and uh, uh, kind of thing. It had like a reddish teal color to it. It was built. My sister came to that show and she was like, you know, this really doesn't represent my husband. So, so that's how we ended up redoing it to what you see it is today. But all out with it. I got my sponsors on board, told him, you know, we wanted to do a military trip and everything to represent my dad and my brother-in-law. So we did a full airbrush. He's the artist that ended up doing the airbrush and everything. I got Lex Johnny on board with the wheel, joined them with the stereo competition. And I mean, my stereo that's in there, they joined on with that. But I'm going to be with the SEMA this year. I'm going to end up being in their booth. So. They came on just, we wanted to do something that you didn't see every day in the mini truck scene. And so we kind of went above and beyond. I think maybe some, some people didn't know how to take it when it first came out. But the actual fader, the, the bullets coming out of the back, the bomb bay door opening up with the, uh, wanted to do something that the troops could appreciate, that the veterans would, 
would have something to come to a car show and say, hey. So that's kind of what we did with it was uh, we took it to the next level. I wasn't about winning trophies. So I never cared about winning trophies. This was strictly built for the veterans to come to you. Nice. Have you had many vet- veterans come up to you and comment about the truck and give you input on it? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we ended up taking it to the first show. Emma, and then the airbrush artist, a guy by the name of David Webb that's on CNN, got mm-hmm. up and said, hey, we'd like, like to have the truck out at Fleet Week in New York City. So we ended up taking it up to New York for Fleet Week for the uh, Navy. Nice. And it went to a guy, went to uh, Jason Derillo. It was at the USB arena. And then we took it to, to uh, parked it down there for the uh, veterans and everything to see. And just to see their, their attitude, how, that was worth anything and everything. Just to see what it's meant to everybody. Much is blown up on TikTok and all the videos and the veterans singing the songs with and the duets with with it that to me means more than anything it's something that will always cherish and live on well in case anybody wants to see it in the future where do you have like a schedule that you're going to be showing it at next i do so my next next show i'm going to end up going to a show called it's going to be in madison mississippi then i'll come back from that and uh, my next show after that's going to be the one in maggie valley uh, showdown in the Valley, Knoxville, for, uh, I think I've got them all written down. I'll be next one, and then, I'm trying to think, after Knoxville, SEMA, then after SEMA, I'm going to Arizona, to, to MTX, my sponsor, we're going to go up a couple days, and then I'll, I'll be going out to, uh, to, uh, trying to think of them all. Yeah. Off the top. yeah right. He just became a full time uh, job with that truck. <laughs> I, 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 you name it, any show, it's, it's, it's been out there. At, I originally had planned on, on stopping in, uh, what was it, March. The uh, original goal was to stop in March. But now I've got like a lot of feedback from uh, uh, the veteran to take it out to like, uh, I think it's, I don't want to phrase it wrong but it's like die each day from you know ptsd and end up committing suicide so they'd like like the you know truck to be at their show next year so i promise them to go to that one there's one the one that i promised it would go to up in michigan so that's that's my goal next year here is do and pull back just on the car show so i'm still going to be out in the car car show scene as what I was this year. Mm-hmm. Now, do it, the you said there was an uh, is there an Instagram or someplace else that those people can go to and see the vehicle from that that. It's not that I, I just joined up for because people were tagging me in TikTok and I couldn't read it, so I signed up for a TikTok. But the truck Instagram page is anchors, uh, and then it way and that's spelled A W E I. G H and then it's one five one five. Got it. Perfect. All right. Now we got two comments here for both from Vinny. Uh full house today and Vinny told said sorry for your loss. Honorable build an amazing story behind it. So uh yeah, definitely some appreciation going out to you for uh, the hard work that you put in on that truck and definitely love the build, love the idea behind it. Um and the thing is is I hope to see it out some more and get some features of it and you know what I mean? Show it off. You know what I mean? I'd definitely, like I said, it'll definitely be out there. I actually thought about, you know, pull, taking it out of the show scene for a while, sending it back up to get more work done. But the problem magnitude that it was going to reach, reading the comments on TikTok and how much it meant to people and stuff. And I was like, you know, I really can't take it away just yet. It needs to be seen. It's touched so many, many people in different ways. So that's why I said, that I'm going to do more on the veteran side next in the show scene. 
Yeah. Well, tonight's topic, which we, I, I, I was hoping that you'd come on because I was like, I don't have any problem delaying the topic to talk about the truck. But tonight's topic was uh, what's your favorite build type and kind of what's custom to you. So um, we definitely want to get into that and kind of ask people, you know, what the deal is, is what they find is custom and what their favorite kind of build is. Uh, so, so, uh, it will say, excuse me, Danny Mac. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you, what do you kind of feel is your favorite kind of build? You know, everybody talks about, I want to get a Honda Civic or I want a Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. I want the Challenger. I want the car that you don't normally see at a car show. Okay. For me, I, it, it's not the Chevy S10. Don't get me wrong. I love low riders. I love airbag trucks. I love the ones scraping the coast up and down all over. But give me that one you don't see. Let's start with that one. Let's start with, uh, uh, let's say, we'll go with uh, my favorite right now is going to be a minivan. Because you don't see that minivan at the car show. You don't see that a minivan with four 15s in the back of it. I want the that mom grocery getter this week. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And do you think that stuff like that would catch on if it really, like the, especially the minivan stuff, like... Uh, I don't see a lot of that out there, and I don't see a lot of people like the sound st system stuff, especially with the sliding door, seemed to be like a pretty strong idea that everybody was going with. I love the sound system bills, but then all of a sudden it just died off like it was, you know what I mean? They went into something different. I don't know if that's because it didn't do very well in SPL or something like that, but is there a reason that you think it's not catching on that way? But, uh, you know, if you look at over time, We'll take doors, for example. The first ones with sliding doors was vans and minivans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then somebody said, hey, let me take that slider off that and see if I can weld it in the side of my car. Then you got sliding doors on cars. Yeah. Lamborghini did it best. They came out with the Lambo doors on their cars. That was their, their key to fame was that Lambo door. Screw the motor, that V12 motor, and it doing 200 and mock bejesus. <laughs> because then they came out with the Lambo door kits for the everyday car. Mm -hmm. Then you saw 27 Dodge Charger with Lambo doors on it. Mm -hmm. Lincoln did it best with the suicide doors on the Continental. Oh, boy, that came back around again. Now you got suicide doors on a Chrysler 300 because somebody ordered that kit and found somebody that installed it. Why not? Why not do a minivan? I would love to do a minivan. I'm not gonna go buy one. You give me bring me your minivan, I will make it the coolest minivan on the world. Did you know, you know that, that remember that video that went viral was the guy that saved the uh, car from was it Pimp My Ride that was like literally parked down the street oh, yeah, from me? I, I was just I was just thinking of that exact van too, yeah, because it was <laughs> it was it was one that was from Massachusetts that um and and it, it started just rotting away kind of thing because the, yeah. the woman couldn't afford it anymore kind of thing and and she sold it and then all of a sudden it just sat oh it was two of. minutes from my house and the thing was is that the the per my friend down the street who does youtube and he does more of trucks he was like i don't usually do that content but i think i should pick it up and then fix it and then whatever joel did you ever see whatever happened to it did it just die uh, off? It, it, it did get like it 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 at least got made roadworthy again, but it 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 wasn't anywhere near you know because a, a lot of the stuff got removed. Yeah. The, the, the kind of one of the sad stories of of like pimp my ride is and what they kind of don't tell you is a lot of times they would do that stuff and then they would go oh well you have to pay for it and people were like oh I can't afford that so they started really? removing some of the stuff. Um, so like the stereo system got taken out, uh, you know the uh, you know all that kind of stuff. So. Um, Vinny, Vinny says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Suicide doors are way before the Continental. Su still cl cool on the Lincoln, but cooler on a 32, 32 Ford. Ford yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So well, that at least it made it roadworthy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Pulled yeah. It back from the dead. And then, and I, you know, I kind of lost track after, after that. Cause you know, it was like, it was an interesting read for like that, that moment kind of thing. And then it, it yeah, he, he got like 2 million views off that video. Yeah, he did. Yeah. It was, it was like right up there, but you know, but it was like the, the, the six seconds of fame, you know, kind of yeah. thing. And, 
Well, they, I think it's, I think it's Tavrish. It was, and he, he still has a good following. I don't know if he has the same level of views, but I mean, stuff like that is just, it, it's rife for marketing. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So Shane, what do you have? What's your favorite type of build and what, what kind of car do you like best? And let us know. I'm going to be to me. I, I like them all. And that that's the truth. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate everything, you know, I've uh, seen, Every show that I go to, that's what, what you see is, you know, many trucks. I was talking to a couple guys. You kind of get tired of looking at, at the same thing over and over and over. To be able to go to a show and see a wide variety of different things, like he was just talking about, you know, you can see the stereo stuff. I like, like to look at prices. I like to look at lifted. I mean, even though it's not my cup of tea, I appreciate every everybody. Body build. And to be honest, the spot the guy police are out there being part of the scene. They're out there supporting the shows. You know, they get a lot of they're out there going on the shows, they're supporting the vendors. They're, they're making the scene still because if you end up not having that support, the shows are going to be way down numbers and they're mm -hmm. going to go out and say everything. I, I like to look at everything. I, I don't have that one specific, even though any truck myself with my son he's got lifted so i appreciate everything out there i'm not one dimension yeah my my biggest problem that i hate this is that i i feel too especially being like and it doesn't matter it's it's the same for everybody is you you kind of get stuck in your area kind of thing and there are cars that get popular in your area versus you go to some place like if you go south there's a different kind of car show that goes on there if you go to california there's a different kind of car yeah, yeah, there's a different kind of car show for every place you're going to go to and a different thing that's kind of popular. And then there's things that people like that I look at them and I was like, you know, if you took that car someplace else, that that car would be the, the best at show. But because it's here and there's a different kind of mindset, it, it doesn't get the popularization that it could get in other places. And that's that's kind of what I'd like to get in touch with is is – not just, I mean, it, people would kind of say it's cultural, but I kind of think of it as demographic. In other words, those different areas to be able to say, hey, would be nice if like Florida has a big show down there that everybody from around the United States comes and visits. And that's, that's, it has a different build type. It has a different vibe to it than I think a lot of people are used to. And then there's the big shows in um, like Detroit and stuff. And those are big and have a different kind of thing. And even though they're, they're something that's, you know, U.S. or worldwide or whatever. Um, so well, for me, it's getting the different kind of demographics out there and put them together and saying, what, what, do you, what do you guys all feel about? It? Is there something that one group is missing versus the other and introducing them to that mindset or that group of people? And you see a lot, especially with the hot rods, that stuff grows and people get interested in it and everybody gets like minded and you get it. You get me to make friendships around the world, and I think that's the best. Joel, what do you have for your uh, favorite build and car and whatnot? Well, I can go visual. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know. I'm like everybody else here. I don't really have like a particular, you know, a particular kind of thing. But like, how many times can you say that you saw a modified bus, school it, bus, the big drag races? That right, was it. right, and, you know, they're, they're they're there absolutely. Um, but you know, it, it's it's just kind of one of those things that, like, you know, when you, um, it, I like seeing uh something different. You know, when uh when you when you go pull into a car show and you see like this this bus that has a blown uh. Please LF tell me that bus has engine. tripper poles. Yeah, <laughs> right, and then uh, uh that kind of thing. But um, but. I, I don't like I said I I don't particularly have like 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 any like specific I mean because who doesn't like a traditional hot rod you know and 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 these are type of machines are always kind of like evocative of like the the beginnings of 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 custom to me right mm -hmm. this is these are the these are the machines that like kind of started the the actual trend of custom. Um, I, I think in the genre of, of the, the, uh, car shows and, and, you know, it was mentioned and I, and I'm going to tell you, like, I, I always love a modified S10. Um, 
Yeah, uh, something friend, about those. It's something. It is. It it is really weird. A friend of mine had one um, that you know that was actually came as a standard, um, mm-hmm. and and he had he had modified his quite heavily. And and this isn't that particular truck, but this is an example that I've seen. And you know, just getting a V8 into an S10 just just is amazing. And and of course, I mean, I could say you know because I do have Corvette and I I. I Corvettes, I kind of like appreciate when they're more like not necessarily modified per se, but you know if they 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 kind of remain as they are kind of thing. But like you, like a Jeep that's done up, um, mm-hmm. it to me is always kind of like a like a really cool thing to see. And, that, and it, I I think people when they do Jeeps too, I think there's almost like. I think there's a confusion about it. There are people that put a ton of money into Jeeps, both the off-road guys, the car show guys, and then you go to the show and you see them, and I don't think people really understand the modifications. Like, they see Jeep and they kind of think, well, that's the way it came from the factory. And I'm like, no, it's got the switch. It's got, you know, different tires. Well, it's got I, mean, it, I mean, it goes deeper than that because a lot of times, you know, and one of the, one of the major modifications that I have to do on my Jeep is that I have to, I have to re-gear that, that thing, you know, because, you yeah. know, you can't, you can't just throw 35 inch tires on a Wrangler X. Right. Ask me how I know. Mm. Um, it's, it, uh, you know, your, your speedometer is way off. And the next thing you know, you can't even, you can't even like climb a hill because you're not, you're not geared right. It, right. It, you know, you need to, um, you need to really kind of go in deep depending on the type of build you do. Um, one of the other questions you were going to ask is like, you know, what, what's custom. And I, I certainly think it's, uh, it, it's, kind of personal to everybody kind of thing but i I think you can go to the most simplest uh uh an amazing paint job whether it be airbrushed uh as we saw an example earlier in the show or um even as simple as you know just changing the color to something like a like a candy pearl or something like that you know uh kind of thing that that's can be custom as well kind of thing And, and it and, and the possibilities are really endless, aren't they? Because I mean, yeah. you, you can't, you don't just stop at paint. You can then go to wheels, then you can go to the engine and then you can go to the interior and then you can go to the stereo system. Um, you, you can just, you can just keep going. And I think that's one of the popularity of like car customizations is that the, the possibilities are kind of endless and not everything has been done because we kind of will see something new like, every year at least you know i you know like two two years ago i saw somebody who actually built a um a a, a scale version of a pedal car yeah uh into an actual car you know and it was <laughs> it's like right. um complete with a steering wheel that was about four and a half feet wide you know kind yeah. of thing uh, uh, so yeah. i think i think reggie wants to do something so i'm going to ask reggie both what his is and give and give him get him get some input on it well, see, I'm not trying to, I'm not changing the subject, but like, for instance, like Shane's truck, uh, many trucks, especially down south, I don't know how they really are up here, but especially down south, many trucks and low riders have like the, the best way of expressing who they are or, you know, what they stand for. I mean, it, to me, it's art. It's beautiful. Low riders and mini trucks have always been a beautiful thing to me because, like his truck, it, it has a meaning. It shows something. Did, did you even name that truck by anything? Did you name it anything? There's a way is the name of it. Oh, really? Uh, well, <laughs> yep, yep. we're not going to we're not going to tell people what's going on here soon. But you already know, I'm sure. Mark already told you. Something about it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. But uh <laughs> real too soon to be talking about that right now. But uh but the thing there's a every car has a different purpose, every every customization has its own reason. Um but my personal favorite has always and will be to the day I die, sixty four Impala Super Sport Low Rider, Sapphire <laughs> Blue, my thing, that's what I've always loved. But <laughs> The reason why, like, for instance, we, that we even do this magazine is I have a passion for everything. Anything that's custom, anything that's unique, anything that stands out, anything that's different, 
I mean, I'm saying it like that, just like like Dennis said and like Shane says. Anything that's different that has a way of like you go to a car show, you see a lot of the same things over and over and over again. But when like Shane's truck came out, it everybody went to his truck. And I'm sure you get people talking crap about your truck a lot too. I mean, I'm sure you do. Oh, I do. I do. You know, it, yeah, just like everybody. And that that's but, well, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, that's the that's the whole magic of building custom vehicles in general. Because, like, for me, when I had my Lowrider Escort, oh, God forbid, I had a Hydra Lowrider Escort. Oh, my God. I had a Dodge Omni, you know, that was all custom. I had a Nissan truck. I've had a four-wheel drive. I've had a minivan. So I've had a little bit of pieces of everything. A minivan? Yeah, uh, I, have, man. I, I bet $20 it was an Astro too, wasn't it? Ooh, yes, it was. Nice. I bet you it was Astro. It was an Astro. And I love that Astro too. <laughs> Good. But like, when I got started, I started with a stock Jeep, 2000 Jeep Cherokee Classic. Straight six in it. Everything was factory. Boy, am I blue or but, what? Yep. But when I started, I started customizing that Jeep with what I can afford. All right. The first thing I made me a checklist. All right. First thing I want to do, I want it sound. Cool. Got the sound. Got a little bit of extra money. I want to throw some rims on it. When I got the biggest rims I could fit without having to do any suspension work on that Jeep. How big were they? 22s. The biggest really? I can go is twenty. The wow. biggest I can go is twenty threes. But that's a Jeep, and I knew my Jeep was two wheel drive. I'm not trying to go climb hills. I'm not trying to go off roading on it. That was a street beast. That was all that Jeep was. So then it went from rims to what can I put under the hood to make it go faster with the turn these ribs so I'm not doing think I'm running five thousand RPMs and only doing twenty miles an hour. <laughs> so I went from a stock Jeep showing it at car shows because I didn't care. It was something I wanted to do. I wanted to have, if I couldn't have the best looking rims on there, I'm going to have the baddest sound system in that motherfucker to make everybody want to go. What the fuck was that? Right. To I threw the rims on there and then everybody's out there. Well, you can't do a burnout in it. I let my best friend go out and do oh, the Oh, they burn. obviously paid, don't know that straight six motor. <laughs> I, and I paid the money for him to go out there and do the burnout competition. I was like, dude, don't blow my back tire because it's a Sunday and there's no tire shop open to get a new one. Yep. To, you know, when I got done with that Jeep to where I wanted it, where everybody looked at it, no matter if it was parked in a parking lot or I was driving down the street, I had the graphics on the side. I had the LED ground glow kit. I had nine TVs in a 2000 Jeep that was hitting 182 decibels. Wow. To, oh, it's just a regular stock Jeep at a car show. To, holy shit, let me take pictures of that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And that's thing you know, I'm in a magazine for life yep. with that damn Jeep. Yep. You know, so the whole custom modern world is what you can afford nobody's telling you to go out and buy a brand new car and then dump another thirty thousand dollars on top of it so you can be the biggest and best at a show to me customizing it is me putting my blood sweat and tears into that car to say yes i did that that's where i get the respect from it that's, wasn't the chop down the street true. It's not the shop across town. It's the shop of my garage mm -hmm. with my friends helping me do it because we all share the same passion to do this. It's me calling people I know, like you guys that come here every week and talk to me to sit there and say, hey, what do you think about this idea if I do it? And that way I'll get the input of people like-minded, like me, that says, I don't think that you're going to make it out of show with that one. Uh, or, yeah, man, let's try that and see what it see. Let's see what it do. Since you live over there, let me know how it plays out. Now, do you, on That's a whole, customized to me. And on a whole, how, how much success have you had versus failure? I, I went from 
not winning car shows to being best of shows and taking first and second, third places all the time. Because it was when I started, when I won my first trophy at a car show with that Jeep, it went from, all right, what do I need to improve for the next car show? So it's something new on it. So they're not seeing the exact same thing every week. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I picked the theme in my head. And that's the theme I ran with for my Jeep. Yeah. I never got it repainted. It was white. The paint on it was perfect. All right. What do I, what can I do to the outside? All right, let's do this. And I wound up with a Grim Reaper down the side of it. And I'm pretty sure if you look at ECS magazine in the archives, you're going to find a white 2000 Jeep, uh, Jeep Cherokee classic Uh on 22 inch black rims, BCO rims, with a Grim Reaper down the side of it. <laughs> nice. Because that was my influence. Because when I first met Reggie, the first thing he said was, you ain't ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I was being honest. Back to the drawing board I go. The next car show I went to that was hosted by the magazine found Reggie. Me and Reggie hung out for 30, 45 minutes just getting to know each other because that's how I started making friends. Reggie looked at me. He said, you still ain't ready yet. All right. (laughs) Let me go back to the drawing board again. Then I started doing sound competitions, and then Reggie's ears perked up. And he said, hey, man, who did your work? And I looked at him and I, with a straight face, I said, I did. But I was in a car club and I was in at the time, we helped each other out. We knew who, which cars we should put focus in for shows, what cars we need to work on next to get them to that level to show. You know, it wasn't just me going out there and then taking the thirty, forty thousand dollars to the shop to and let somebody do the work. So when you ask me what what's all done to it, I can go, uh yeah, about that. Mm-hmm. I I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't want to look like Boo Boo the Fool when I go up and show my car. I quit yeah, putting on you... car show slips what mm-hmm. I did to it. I started putting blood, sweat, and, and tears and, and beers. Mm-hmm. We've and we've all spoken to that guy. <laughs> Am I the only one in here to just realize that Sebastian just made me look like Boo Boo the Fool? <laughs> no, Sorry. you didn't look like Boo Boo the Fool. You look like a mentor in the car club game with that. Because if I didn't listen to you and just said he don't know what he's talking about, I would have stopped right where I was at versus I'm going to push forward to make it better. Because at the end of the day, everybody in the custom car club world wants to see their car in a magazine, in a video, in something to say, yeah, that's my car. That truck that that he built, that memorial that he built, because it's not a truck at this point. That is a memorial. That is a rolling memorial for his family. I don't care what anybody says. That will be best to show at any car show I host. I don't give two shits if I got a damn redone 76 Camaro because that car, that truck has a meaning behind it. My Jeep had a meaning behind it to please everybody else. It was something to please me. And if anybody in the car custom car world, I don't care what kind of car it is. If you're doing it, you're doing it something to please you. Low riders love them to death. I like being behind low riders, especially ones with bags on them or the ones with hydraulics that are hopping down the street. There's nothing like seeing that low rider hopping down the street with a bagged out truck behind it. We'll say S10 scraping the ground, fucking up the road. I don't get two shits. <laughs> and here I come in a Jeep that ain't doing shit but beating and busting out windows at the same time. Yeah, but that you were more about stereo. You were more about stereo than anything else, though, man. 
Yeah, that was that was true at the time. At the time, but then I, I wound up putting the rims on there. I wound up doing the graphics on the outside of it because vinyl at the time was the shit. And it yeah, wasn't doing true. the whole car wrap; it was doing graphics. So here yeah. it is. I started with a Grim Reaper with a sigh. Then I said, what can I do to top that? Let's put some skulls underneath that. Well, it's interesting, so, though. Is, isn't that how it starts? It's, it's you, you start with one thing, and then you go, well, because I did that, now I have to do this. And then because I did that, now I got to do that. And then it starts, like, snowballing. Like, you know, like, for me, like, on my Corvette, like, when I got, when I got new wheels... All of a sudden, I looked and I'm like, "Well, now I have to make the the brakes and rotors look good because you know I have these beautiful wheels on top of these ugly rotors, <laughs> ugly ugly brakes kind of thing." And I and so it kind of snowballs into like that. Like, what are we going to improve it, next? And it became custom to you to make it look good, right? That's that's the custom car world. I think somebody's telling beeping at Shane telling him to come on, let's get going. <laughs> I feel like the I'm at, now. had to get ready to close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it felt like the lights went out wherever you were at. I thought it was bright like two minutes ago, and all of a sudden it was like poof. It was. They're closing down where I'm at. <laughs> oh, okay. So are they kicking you out? They're getting ready to shut down. That's why you, I think that was their way of saying, hey, man, you trash it out. They, they said they said the whole Elvis has left the building thing. <laughs> yeah, or Elvis needs to leave the building. Like, hey, you know, your key, we're gonna you know, blow the lead blow over the truck, then they cut the lights out. That's like they, they giving me every, every hint. Hey, you got to go. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah. If you if you wouldn't if you wouldn't have to jet or do anything like that because you don't want to get locked in anywhere, let us know and we can you can just pull us right out because that'll be fine. But um, yeah, you don't have to stick around if you don't if you got a place to be or something like that. Okay. No, no I'm just I'm in North Carolina. I picked up a car for, for my mom, so we're shutting down a, a lot and all that stuff. They're telling us, hey, you got to get it going. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to say, and I think that this was brought up a couple of times here, and I, I just think it's important to say is that um, a lot of people, you know, it's really easy to pay attention to the people that are critical of you. Um, and and that's the thing is, is it's I think that's the problem is, is when we we're builders or we're doing something, we're trying to look for ways to improve things. We don't want to fix stuff that works, obviously. But we want to continue to improve things and we continue to listen to what should be constructive criticism. In other words, people that look over at you and say, this is what it is and this is how to do it. I think the problem is, is that in that mesh of things, a lot of times we end up listening to the people who are critical in the wrong ways or people who say things that literally just I, I it's like it doesn't need to be said. And there's a lot of stuff out there of, of and I'm going to say something really gross, just diarrhea of the mouth. Like some people can't don't know when to shut up uh, and they let that stupidity come from the inside to the out. So, you know what? Here, here's my thing is if anybody's out there is following your passion and you're doing what you think is right or you're doing the best you can for your car. If you're if it's not the right thing for your car, you're going to look at it and say, yeah, I'm not really feeling that. Or, you know what? That doesn't really work. People, you know, when you're doing the cheap thing or when you're saying, you know what? I, I can wait a couple of days maybe get a little bit more money and do it right. Maybe that's the problem or, or all these different things. But the truth is, is that for the most part, if you ignore those people that don't, that are going to be critical of you in the wrong ways, I want people to start paying attention to the people that are their fans. Think about how many people out there give you positive reinforcement for everything you do. For instance, Shane has his truck. Shane goes out he did something for his family, but he did something for veterans. And here is somebody that's coming back, all these different veterans, that it means so much to them. And now they're walking up and seeing that truck. I mean, just look at it. 
and thinking, wow, man, that the, the Bombay door thing, how cool is that? And they're saying all these positive things and saying how much this truck is there. How he's got a sponsor. He's got people dying for him to be at the show. And it would be so easy to kind of say, what about those critics? You know what? Yeah. To hell with the critics. If everybody's looking at you and saying it's doing right and two or three people are saying you're doing it wrong, don't think about them. Block them out of your head. If those people don't want to deal with you because they don't like what you're doing, you know what? You got better things to do. There are certain people in your life that you're just going to have to offload because either they want to be critical of you or they want to make your life. Some people just want to drag you down. And that's the problem is, is if you want to keep doing better, you're going to have to offload some of that negativity and don't talk about it. If, you know what? If I broke up with my ex-wife and I sat and talked about her all day, do you think the new wife's going to like it? No. Get rid of the get the old baggage, get the new shoes, come out, and then say, you know what? This is it. This is what they like. And watch your fans get on board with you. And when you start appreciating them, they will they, they just get louder. And I think that's the greatest thing in the world. So, yeah, it's a little less focusing on the criticism, more focusing on the success. And I think a lot of people would do a lot better and instead of saying, you know what, there's two or three people that don't like me, I'm going to give up with the car world. Right, Danny? That is very true. And, you know, for every hater, you get two lovers. Yeah, right. You know. Well, I think, I think, for- I think Danny, you brought up like a, like kind of like a great example, though, um, because, and, 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 and kind of, like adding more uh, focus to what Alan is saying is that there's, there's positive criticism or constructive criticism, and then there's negative criticism. Um, there's a huge difference on it. Um, and, you know, the, I think you could like interpret Reggie's not, not real criticism by saying well, you're, you're not there yet. Keep, keep plugging kind of thing. And, right. I, and I, think, I think that's, that's positive. That's positive. Um, Build, building them up. Yep. You know, it, that's positive, you know, building of, of like saying, Hey, keep going. You know, don't, don't stop. Yeah. Don't stop now. Keep, keep going. And I, and I think that's the important thing to be able to, um, to discern is um, not necessarily dismiss criticism because there, there is good criticism. There's, you know, there's criticism that's saying, Oh, I see where you're trying to go there, but I think maybe if you had done it this way, um, you might have like you know knocked it a little bit better kind of thing or or you know kind of thing. I mean, uh, you know, I I took a little criticism for like when I originally was thinking about just doing a specific thing to my car, and then somebody came over and said, "Well, have you thought of right?" <laughs> you know, kind yeah. of thing. And 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 that's a that's a positive way of doing it, not saying, "Oh no, that's stupid." Yeah. And then and then locking it down at that, and then that, that's it. You know, you know, no other. No, no push of suggestion or anything like that. So, so you know, crit- criticism can be good in, uh, in certain situations, and, and I think that's important to recognize as well. But it's constructive. Yeah. Like, right. like we were saying with Reggie. Reggie goes over to Denny and says, you know what, maybe you do this, maybe you do that, maybe you do that. Go ahead, Reggie. Don't, don't listen to everything Sebastian over here is saying. <laughs> <laughs> he's known me too long. He's trying to make me sound like I'm a, a bad guy or something. That's what he's trying to make me sound like. That guy oh, right no. there. <laughs> well, huh? you know, it's the shoe fits, but uh, at the end of the day, I took all your your constructive criticism, yep. and I took it, and I went from sitting on step five to sitting at top of the show for some of those car shows, you know. And I it, I didn't take it the wrong way. I took it as all right. He's the professional. He does car shows for a living. Yep. I'm getting new. To, I'm new to this world. Mm-hmm. But over and over the years, it's like I've taken what I've learned. And I've listened to the criticism from several different places, several different people. And it wasn't just Reggie. It was other car show magazines that was there. It was yeah, other exactly. people. It was other people that was around me at the time, and I took all their criticism. And they're like, "Hey, uh, we know we noticed you got this going on, 
this is what you're missing, you know, to other uh, listening and getting friends with other car clubs at the time. It was like, hey, have you tried this yet? Or try switching this up, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't show up with the same thing every week because people who are vested, gonna, people who are vested in your success, right? Yeah, and it was people I didn't even know. To me, going to car shows and me going to places and talking to car pe people that's been in the car show world for years before I even thought about it, and sitting there listening to them, but also me being the 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 uh, the uh, follower. And to the uh, groupie, to the uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, to go from the Jedi to the master. <laughs> oh, like that one, didn't you? <laughs> mm. yeah. But you know, to now, here it is. I'm at a position where I have a kid that I can mentor about his car, and I, I agree with her, yeah. I can I can get I have a kid I mentor and I can teach him about his car to my own kid to when he's ready to start driving. All right, we're gonna hit the ground running. We just gotta figure out what we wanna do with it, what he wants to drive. Yep. All right, so I just want to use some stats over here. United Dreams Auto team said sup guys, and then next gen New England said custom to me is parts that can't be bought on eBay or Amazon. And I just I would like, well, that's the thing is I bought a really nice uh, air fresheners on eBay and Amazon. And I, <laughs> so I became a power seller selling car parts on eBay too. So I don't know, but yeah, the, um, I, I think it's, 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 you can, any resource that gets you to become, to get you to the success, I would say, use that as an opportunity. Uh, I really don't think Amazon is going to have all the crazy cool parts that, you're going to need over a hole. Um, but that's the thing is, is I would hate to look at somebody and go, you know, you got to fabricate everything. So yeah, the thing is, I, 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 I kind of, I, I, I see where he's going with that. And I, and yeah. I don't necessarily disagree with it. Right. Um, but like, like a perfect example of that is in the Jeep world. You know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of that is about getting parts that you can easy, re easily replace when you're going off roading. Right. Um, kind of thing. And, and you break you, everything. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, I bought you know. some parts off of eBay and they worked out amazing. I yeah. bought some parts yeah. off of Amazon and they still rocking and rolling too. It was cheaper than yeah. going somewhere else. <laughs> Just do me a favor. <laughs> Go, Reggie. I'm not criticizing people buying things off of eBay or AutoZone or Marketplace and stuff like that. Customization to me is. Like I said earlier, building something for yourself, not for everybody else. Customization don't mean, oh, this guy bought off of this. Who cares where you bought it or you build it? As long as you decide what you do and the reason why you do it. Let me I mean, just say, I, here's my input on that. The, um, you know that little thing that they say plug into your cigarette lighter that gets you extra gas mileage? Oh, that, that thing is that's amazing. Not, that's not real. <laughs> so if you buy that thing... Yeah, you you you. Made You're it wrong, Alan. I I proven it. <laughs> I and it's not that. Yeah, it's like the thing is like, and don't ask me how I know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> on my six one, I thought it was going to be the one. No, um, no, it's the the thing. If you don't want to be that, that's something you're going to get criticized on, and there's no well, positive to it. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I, I I there's a gentleman that I know who has a 1970 GTO, and when you open up the hood, it's all chromed out on the inside. And you kind of go, wow, that's cool. Where'd you get, where'd you get all that chrome stuff? And he goes, he goes, Ames, 1981. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like you know, so you know, he's still rocking the Ames part that you know that were you know hanging off the you know the shelf and the in the in the in the bubble stuff and and well, it, think about it, that too. Think about what it was like. I mean, I, I I still am trying to imagine the 80s when we said, you know what, we need a new filter or we need something for the engine or you need new pistons. Are you going to rebuild the whole thing? I mean, right. it, it, we've built carburetors thousands of times and now I go online and I pick up a kit from some like summit or whatever. It's like, you just buy this kit and it's like all there. And then I go back and I go, how did we survive before? Like did all well, those, summit, it's always summit was around, but you know, I mean, summit's been around, you know, that long, but the thing is, is summit was, 
like that much more expensive back then. Right. You, you just know, go to the know. corner place and you're like, I picked up a right. kit, but it was always, there was something missing in the kit. There was something up there. Right. Like, they didn't right. have the one for your car that would, you know, this one has the race set up versus the, you know, and now today I'm like, think about how many more parts we have because different brands and with, you know, it went from, you know, carburetors to single port to multi port to, you know, you, now multi everything, you know, like it's, it's just crazy. And I think right. about that and I'm like, how do we, what, what did we do before the internet? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're right. So, okay. Shane is killing me. I don't mean to interrupt you, Primo, but Shane is yeah. killing me. Explain yes, the back, explain the back build of your truck and the interior of your truck. Before, <laughs> I got to know the, what's the deal with the two stair wheels and what was the whole concept of the back, uh, back bed? All right. So we wanted to do it totally authentic. If we were going to go Navy, we wanted to do it all out. So I was in touch with this guy that had a boneyard out in Arizona. All the gauges on the inside are off of a Grumman airplane. Nice. So, so that's why I've got two, two, two yoke steering wheels is because that's what they have for the Grumman. All the gauges. Ages, the radar detector, everything is off of a drum and air planning. So then if you notice how, how it's got like a uh, submarine, the uh, truck. So we wanted to have a Bombay door. Type. When you hit the actuators, it actually sounds like a Bombay. It's got that sound to it. So we cut two nice. air, air tanks in half. And we ended up making a torpedo out of it. And then <laughs> we decided, okay, we're working. Uh, you know, we're going to wrap the batteries in 50 caliber bullets. So we just wanted everything to shock you, have that shock factor. Oh my God, I've never seen that in a many truck. We're building it to win trophies. We were building it strictly to kind of, oh my God, I've never seen something like that. We wanted it. To be something at show, not something normal. Just like, oh wow, it's a, uh, you know, I love wanted to give that wow factor, and that's what we went well, for. Think of how many automakers out there that said, you know, we want to build our vehicle like a jet fighter, and you actually did it. Like it actually has the torpedo, it has all the stuff. Like, <laughs> well, <a laughs> it was like I don't think they dream like that. <laughs> people also don't know. I don't have a gas pedal in that truck the gas pedal a throttle that's mounted in my center console i have no gas pedal it's a gas pedal that you use like you're taking off an airplane what wow <laughs> he's got a throttle <laughs> not a gas pedal okay i gotta hurry yeah. and get more i gotta hurry and get martin send me over to pitches for the feature yeah. on this i can't hold myself i had to say it yeah. I got, and I like, got it doesn't the key doesn't even start the truck. Everything is in the, uh, you would start a jet fighter. Everything's, all the gauges and everything are mounted in the ceiling. Switches, you know, you got your fuel, you got your fuel pump. It's set up just like it. We just, like I said, we wanted, if we were going to do it, what we wanted to do, it was an aircraft. And that's what we went with. It. We just ran, ran, ran kind of wild. That's funny. I would love to see the, um, I, you know, like a display, all the thing. And I, yeah, I got to see this. I, I it's, yeah, I, the I, pictures and stuff that he has on the video there. It, there needs to be more. <laughs> oh, there is a lot yeah, more. Well, that, 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 I got where you can see me firing it up because a guy at uh, one of the judges that's wanted to do a, a whole walk around video. God, it was probably like, like a three minute video, many different switches switches and everything I have to hit. All that the key does is just something. That's all that the key does. Other than that, the key serves no purpose. That's hilarious. Yeah, so, so I, I have a question. Yeah. You said specifically you did not build it for trophies. Right. <laughs> How many trophies have you gotten? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> there's no way you're gonna tell me you haven't gotten trophies. Right. Or 
I have gotten tro trophies, but I do not know the. I don't don't keep up with the exact number. <laughs> and to be honest, he's already lost count. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I was going to say because the number is so high. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, I do, I do he's so know modest. That's great. That the best of shows, I do know the number for best of shows is five. Okay. Yeah. okay. But, that's okay. just best of shows. <laughs> but, he didn't build it, but he didn't build it for trophies. But, no. But, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> No, hey, but, 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 here, but, like but here's everybody. the thing: doesn't that make it? Doesn't it make it that much better though? Because I want to know how many trophies he's returned and said, "Look, I I wasn't here for that." Right. <laughs> 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 like I told people, as of next year, I'm not entries. Even though I'm coming back to the shows, it won't be entered because I feel like okay, I've yeah. won. I only entered this year because I wanted to compete against the best and see what the truck so I think it's really year, nice I, I think it's really nice that you left something for the rest of us I appreciate that's it that's right <laughs> even though in all honesty he just wanted to see what the blood sweat and tears of that truck would get him in life <laughs> that's, that's, that's all you know, I, know I wanted I'm to right. say you know, would it be or is it going to be too over the top for some, some judges and that's why I entered it because you know okay, okay well how do we judge this is it way over the top or be on with it and that's why I was like I'm going to see you know what it'll do this, this year and that's well, why I say you know it's got to be too over the top or... five of them gave up and you're just like best to show I, I got nothing else for you sorry right. <laughs> right. no I mean I could probably count off the top of my head let's say I'm trying to think. get the spark show because I was actually quite shocked on that because I was like, oh my God. So, so uh, I have five best of shows, three at the yep. Sparks. So uh, uh, we'll let's just, let, see. We're going to leave it at a gallery I and then say that it's just... 12 right now. It's so, 12. so if you got to dedicate your own little menagerie to this new collection you've got here now, right? Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's 12 right now. I do know that. There you 12. go, 12. That's a good number. So there you go, Joel, 12. 12. I picked up yep. two. Yep. But, uh, uh, straight from the coast, so it's 13. Great. And if he, he doesn't want them, Joel, he's going to ship some to you. And uh, that way, That's right. yeah. share I the will. Way. I found like four, <laughs> that are, you know, four or five that, you know, I, I can't give up. I can say that Okay. No, that's fine. Uh -oh. No, he, uh -oh. Joel doesn't want them all. He no, just no, wants no, one no, or two. No, 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 no. One or two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always, I, I always make the joke about my cars is that uh, I'm like, you know, my my cars will turn heads, but they're they're never going to win the show. Right. Let me wow. put it like this: When I drive my car, my old cars, when I used to drive them in traffic, people would drive out of the way because they realized it wasn't worth any money and insurance wouldn't pay out. So they just say, you know what? I don't want to get hit by that guy because trust me, he's doing more damage to us than we're ever going to do to him. But anyway, yeah. so Vinny said, check out the plain Jane bill from early 2000s. It was modeled after a P51 Mustang, a 1990. I, you know, I, I, I actually think I've seen that. I, I think I, I've seen I, it too. I feel like I, I've seen that one. A battle on Bama a couple of years back. It's got like the, uh, I'm going down the side of it and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I I've always I've that. always loved any anything with that uh, A10 warthog look on the front with the you know the growling yeah. teeth. There's yeah. a lot. So I, there's few. There are cars that it doesn't look good on. So before anybody tells me I'm wrong, but <laughs> there's a lot. There's so many vehicles out there that you look at it later, especially like the old the old Volkswagens that that like the little you know like the Corrados and stuff. I yeah. could I was like it can't look good on there, and somebody did one in that OD green and did the little the the face on it, and I was like, oh my god, it's perfect. Like I I, just, I, I saw I, I saw a, a Volkswagen Golf that had it. And and I initially looked at it and kind of went, 
you know what? I kind of like it. <laughs> it grows on you. Right? <laughs> but if you do, like, you can't just do the teeth. You got to do the colors or a camouflage. Yeah, and you, you got to do the colors. You got to have the the angry eyes. You know, a riveted kind of look. That's something yeah. that I've always wanted to see kind of catch on because they, originally that was all rap. You know, like because unlike because like Shane's car is actually it's actually well, airbrushed, so like it's actually painted. I mean, versus, well, you know I what actually, I mean? Like my inside, I actually got aircraft rivets rivets into my door panel. See? And I want to open it up. But on see, the though, panel. like, I mean, weren't, yeah. don't, you, don't you think, like, the early, like, wide body kits that were added, like, a lot of them were, like, pop riveted on kind of thing, so. Yeah, that's, kind of, I, I, it, I liked them early, but now I think it's overdone. Right, Am I, right. Am I wrong with that? Like, I, no, it, I, don't, I, I don't think you're wrong. I think they're kind of stuck. See, I wanted the race car look. In other words, like, if you get any of the wide body stuff that's off of, you know, IMSA, Super GT, uh, World Challenge stuff, all those wide body kits, they look clean. They look right. That, I mean, if you didn't know anybody, you're like, that's how it comes from the factory, right? And yeah. I think that we, then we went to the Hot Rods, the Creeps Car Club thing. And I want to say it was Salvage and Son. And he did a Frankenstein Hot Rod truck with the big turbo sitting out of the top of it and just uh, it was the perfect wide body so i was just like either of these directions work but i'm just so tired of the rivets like i'm just yeah do something else <laughs> but no but with yours with the military stuff and any of that stuff you rivet all day long as many rivets right. as you want to put in it the more rivets the better because it always looks good i mean it I mean, well, if it works, it, if it works, it works, right? Yeah. You know, and 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 that's the thing is, it's it's all subjective to 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 each build, you know, and, and you know, on one that build makes it custom, right? And on one on one build, yeah. it's not going to work. This is why we brought Denny here. That's his right. job from here. On, it. you know, on one build, that. it might not work, and we're going to give the negative con comment on it, yeah. and <laughs> and right. then uh, on another build where it's like, oh, you know, keep going with it, you know. Right. Kind of, you know. Well, I hate to end this, guys. It's been a great show today, but uh, at some point, I, a lot of people out there have to go to bed, and I know they they're riveted to the screen and giving us great input. I want to thank everybody. What are you talking out. about? It's still daylight. See, see what he did, there? Yeah, yeah, but we, but us. I mean, the the pumpkin's getting ready to turn back into a chariot. Um, <laughs> I want to thank everybody out there that made a comment in the comments. Uh, for those that gave us input. Um, if, if you have anything to say, please use those common areas that work on Facebook, they work on YouTube and the R yeah. system that we have actually takes them all and brings them into one spot. Um, if things aren't responding, make sure you get in touch with us and let us know. There was a time when it, the system wasn't really pulling stuff through. If it's not doing that, let us know. Uh, we'll make sure we get it fixed and make sure we get some comments to your questions to do our best to get ahead of it. We want everybody to be involved. And also remember that this is a hangout. This is all about everything about the car scene, everything about the car world. We're always looking for ideas, things to talk about, things to do. Uh, and for, so I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Um, Reggie, so Denny Mack, Joel from New England Auto Shows .com, and Shane showing off his awesome Nissan Frontier, which I just think uh, the more I hear about it, the cooler it sounds. And by all means, I, I know... I know you don't want the trophies, but just accept them because we have to give them to somebody and we might as well give it to somebody that deserves it. How's that? <laughs> hey, and before we go, yeah, I can't wait to see that truck in person. All right, me too. Before go we ahead, go, we should, we should mention uh, controlfreak.com. I yeah. was going to do that because I, you're getting right into it. So everybody, remember, every week, Wednesday at 7 p.m., ECS Hangout, you can look for us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the cool social IG, all the cool social platforms. Remember, as always, we are sponsored by Control Freak. That is controlfreakcompany.com. Go over and get some of your awesome wireless technology so you can make sure you have the best build possible and be custom. So that is very important. So I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. I want to thank everybody that gave us input. It was a great show tonight. I am looking forward to you guys coming back next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'll have another topic ready to go. Anything else for the rest of the night, Reggie? Yes, hit that what? subscribe button. <laughs> hit that like, like button. Like, Share subscribe, it. follow, do it. And just hit that bell. Put it on, put it on your toe. <laughs> put, put it on the toe tag. Hitch it to the thing and let the show drag you along. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. As always, guys, remember, keep on rolling. <laughs>